Hello. So what I'm doing is uh, putting together a small video. It's a lot longer than I had hoped, uh, showing you how I make this this Victorian style ring. I use these uh, uh, dies that were provided by Kevin Potter. I really encourage you to check out his YouTube channel and his website. These are wonderful. So what you do, this one I used a copper uh, frame to, to cut out the metal up to approximate the size. And after that, then I pressed it first, and then you trim the flashing. And it took three pressings with repeated annealing in this one to, to get it just right. But that's not atypical for these, for these rings. Um, they turned out really, really sharp. I really liked the uh, look of this design. The leaf pattern is gorgeous. It's deep. Uh, you need to leave a little metal at the at the back end of the shank in order to be able to use something to pry it out of the die um, if you trim it too close that is like I do okay so at the end uh, I, I will solder these together and you get an estimate of the size this is full size which will turn out to be about an 11 to 12 ring which I will resize well these are the uh, two halves of the shanks that I completed. Uh, they've got a bit of a polish on them, but not much. I put just enough on so I can see what the final result's going to be like. And I also want to uh, put a quality stamp on the back. And I do that uh, while I can still place it in the in the uh, in the mold or the die. Okay, because what you want to do is, of course, take your quality stamp and line it up and give it a good whack without too much of a deformation. So that's that's actually pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you would do the same thing if you wanted to uh, put your mark on there, a hallmark or something, but what I'm going to do is take the other half and probably engrave my signature into that before I join the two pieces end to end. Okay, End to end, like that, is the first step I use to uh, put these together. Uh, I measured it, I don't know, I, I would estimate this one just almost full length would uh, come out to be like a 9, between a 9 and a 10 uh, in size. So I'm just going to leave it that way to start and uh, see how it goes since this is my first try with this particular die. Well, since this is uh, my first effort at this, and I don't know how I'm going to deal with the shank uh, and the setting portion yet. I'm going to avoid uh, putting my name across the interior of the setting and instead I will uh, put it here on the shank, which is more traditional anyway. So first I draw approximately my, my lettering and uh, then I'll cut it. I don't do this on all my work, but uh, special pieces I, I do try to, to do something like it. Um, it adds a little extra uh, value, I think, and, and pride to the work. So first thing I do is um, make initial cuts. Okay. This is not um, considered to be classical engraver's script. This is sort of a shorthand version that I've developed for my signature. Classical engraver's script has a very standardized and uh, very distinctive look. I actually really love it, but I'm not particularly skilled at it. 
and I haven't practiced it much, which probably explains my lack of skill. So we're just outlining the main letters. of my name. And I back cut where I start long lines, it makes them much cleaner. Almost. Yeah, I have a, a couple stamps with my name and uh, on many things, that's what I'll Well, these use, are the but, uh, uh, two halves pieces of the shanks that, I, that I, I like to sign them. So this one, just to guess how big the letters are, it's not super small. Uh, this is fairly straightforward stuff. The, uh, the lettering is about three to three and a half millimeters tall, and looks like about 15, 14 long. So three and a half or four millimeters by 15. And that's my signature. Well, here's my horrible mess of a soldering station. Um, I've got a, a borax flux and I've trued up the uh, ends of these pieces of, of the ring, ring shanks. And what I'll be doing is simply fluxing them. Whoops. I'll be fluxing them and then uh, soldering them with hard solder. into pickle and very quickly and then water and that'll clean up pretty well okay so that's the beginning of the process now what I'll do is um, grind I'll file that joint just a little bit so that it doesn't uh, deform too bad badly and then I'm going to put initial curvature into both of these uh, crossbars uh, before I decide how best to uh, shape that uh, shank. Okay, so basically this is my setup. Um, it's pretty standard. I have a bunch of miscellaneous urethane bits and uh, customized pushers and uh, my press is set up with spacers that sometimes I take in and out as needed. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is use a round bar, a piece of round stock, and put a curvature into the initial part of the uh, the, the setting portion of the ring. So I, I, I like to do that first. You, you don't have to, uh, but that seems to work best for me. So let me uh, set this up so that you can maybe see, and then uh, I'll set this up and, and press it. So what I do is I have a block of urethane that uh, is part of a larger block that I had and cut. And I use a long, a long rod, typically, you can, this is just aluminum, uh, use whatever you think works. Uh, given the small size of that uh, setting cross piece, I'm going to use a relatively small, this is about a half inch rod, um, to start. I, I'm not going to put the whole curve in, but it's handy to 
do this with a longer piece because then I can center it and hold it and go ahead and, and pump it up until it catches. This also lets me keep the work perfectly centered in the press and then I can also, like I'm doing now, adjust my alignment a little bit as needed because inevitably things move around as I'm sure you well know and this isn't a situation where I would want to use tape or anything like that to secure the piece. Once I get just a little friction on there I check and make sure it's symmetrical and once that's symmetrical I'll give it some some push and that will push it into the urethane and I'll let it release pull it out and you see what I've got so now I've gotten this sort of very nice symmetrical start uh, which hasn't damaged the uh, the design at all because it was pressing into the urethane I mean it probably uh, smooths out some very very delicate lines but the next step will be to re-anneal it and then put it on the mandrel and curve it so that these two bits meet in the middle and then I'll solder those together and it'll look like an ugly duckling at that point um, but then by putting it on the mandrel and, and pounding on it with a leather hammer and, and manipulating it with ring pliers uh, you get it to shape so that's where we're going with this okay so all I'm doing here is trying to soften the curvature using these ring pliers so that I can get this to be sort of half of an oval. It won't be uh, perfect this way, but that way I can uh, approximate it and then solder it together and do some final shaping after I see what the dimensions appear to be. Okay, so I'm just looking at this. Yeah, it needs a little bit more. Using the curved part on the inside to follow the profile. Okay, so those are not ideal, but they're pretty close. So this is what you wind up with. Hopefully you can see that. And now I'll bring that together on a mandrel. It will it will not look great no matter what I do, but that brings these together like about that. Okay, so then what I'll be doing is just uh, fiddling with this to adjust it and make these two edges line up and then I'll be soldering these with hard solder. Okay, so I'll, uh, after I do some fiddling on that, I'll take another video. doesn't look very good. Yeah, there's the face of it. What you see is uh, all I did was uh, fiddle the two sides together until they came a little closer in touch and then I used a piece of binding wire. It's just iron wire and uh, I'm holding him holding these two pieces together in alignment. So what I'll do first is um, put a little ball of hard solder on on this side and let that uh, get get joined and then I'll flip it over so I can put the ball of solder from the inside on the other side and uh, that will complete that operation once again this particular design is a little unique in that the uh, the edges of these leaf elements uh, if you 
do like I did and, and cut them, uh, they will form gaps because it's actually a really nice detail. Uh, but they're going to get filled with solder uh, in that seam. And I may have to re, like I said, re-sculpt a little bit of that detail. Okay, so what we have now is a, is a bit of an ugly duckling um, that's kind of misshapen and looks kind of goofy, but uh, you can begin to get the sense of what's going to happen. So when I put this on the ring mandrel now and I, I start making this rounder, that's going to draw this uh, part of the signet downward as these parts go out. So see what you can do is imagine that I'm pulling it this way and these will sink in the middle at least that's the theory we'll see if it works um, it uh, looks like a fairly large stone right now it's horizontally oriented I may reshape this so that it's uh, oriented this way I tend to prefer rings that are like that um, so we'll see how that goes okay okay there is uh no elegance to this. Um, what I do is put it on a mandrel and whack at it with a hammer. So we can start by doing this to get it here. And I was right, that's going to be about a 9 to 10, actually 10 and a half. I don't like that. I'm going to probably, after I get this shape, I am going to resize it to be more like a nine and a half or so. That tends to be um, a little more sellable or saleable. Okay, so just so you know, this one, if you do it full size, it will wind up being between an 11 and a 12. Okay, and uh, that's a pretty significant chunk of a ring. So uh, I, you could get easily get away with um, slicing that shank a couple more millimeters off uh, before you do that. Now, as I look at this, I really don't, I, I'm not a big fan of the horizontal rings. A lot of people do like them. Um, so what I'm going to do is is make this more oriented in, in, the, uh, in the what I call the vertical, uh, which would be along the length of the finger. And one way to start that is to is to place a, pe a pair of pliers, these are ring, ring shank or ring nose pliers, in there. Oops! And you discover that your solder joint was not strong enough. Okay, which is it's better to discover that now than later. So I'll be taking this back over and redoing that joint and then reshaping it. So I might leave this mistake in the video just so you can see what happens. Well, okay, so 
The mistake that I made uh, was with this particular design, I was uh, a little bit too sparing with my hard solder, trying to retain the detail here as these pointy leaves meet. Um, that's going to be a little problematic for you. What I, what I had done was just solder the tips of those three leaves together. There's three points here um, where they come together and I had only soldered the tips and that's pretty weak. So what I did was re-solder it uh, with a, using a little more solder to fill the gap. I don't usually like to fill gaps uh, with solder but with this design it's either that or you have to file these horizontal which which I don't think would look as good. So I'm going to see if this will work. It's an experiment for me as well. So as I mentioned what I'm going to do is put my pliers on the uh, on the joint and really stretch the the dickens out of it. There we go. Yeah, that actually did it. So now it's more of a round shape and that's getting to be where I want it. Um, I'm not going to want a round stone for this, although it would it would be pretty nice. I think I'd like an oval. And again, it looks like about a 10 or a, maybe a 12, it's a 12 or 14 millimeter circle. I'll measure it after I get it a little better. Okay, so that's a little more close to an oval. And so now I can sort of try to shape it a little more. And I'll do that with my ring pliers. Ah, some people have uh, oval mandrels and uh, that can be very useful. I can also just put it on the anvil and carefully give it a smack with my leather hammer. Yeah, so that tends to make that a little, a little nicer and then I can round these a little bit more easily. Okay, so then this needs to be a little more rounded and uh, Basically, it's a matter of fiddling with this by hand until it's perfectly symmetrical and it looks really, really nice. Um, I'm not there yet, but I'm pretty close. So you can see that that's, that's going to get there. Now, uh, since I've already deformed it again, I'm going to go ahead and round this to bring the shape of this back down. Again, keeping in mind that it's going to be way too big for what I want as a final ring. But there, see it rounded that out too, so I'm going to need to reshape that into an oval. That's getting there. Yeah, so I have a feeling what I'll be doing is soldering a seat in this. Yeah, that's getting to be looking okay. I will probably be soldering a seat into that and maybe uh, seeing if a standard stone fits, that's fine. Uh, if not, I'll just have to cut one to fit. So again, I, have not, I haven't ground out or filed, used my file on any of this, so these joints are, are kind of kind of yucky. Let's take a quick peek at uh, how approximately how big this is going to be. So across here is yeah 12. It's going to be 12 by 18. So so that's not a surprise really. I, I think these older designs probably most of what what Kevin is uh, pro, uh, producing and finding for us are things that had been in production, and so they would have uh, expected it to. Uh, fit a fairly standard size of a cabochon um, repeatedly. So uh, that'll be that'll be pretty neat. I'll have to I'll have to do a 12 by 18 stone. I have a couple uh, on hand, but I may I may just decide to cut one. And uh, as Kevin mentioned, a high dome would be nice, and maybe a high dome jade or or a high dome um, high dome. I like I like the idea of a green stone in this because of the leaves, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So what I'll be doing is just shaping this a little bit more and then I'm going to 
uh, do a resize on this before I well you know what I'm going to do I'm going to cut a seat I'm going to make this uh, really nice oval and then I'm going to cut a seat and install the seat before I resize this ring down to about a nine um, I think that will work better because because every time you you mess with this you deform if you if you if you mess with the shank dimension you will deform the setting dimension okay so by adding a uh, a seat in there first I uh, can hopefully uh, minimize that okay so that's where we're at with this it it's starting to look like a ring In there. Yeah, not too shabby. It's uh, not entirely where I wanted. I don't think, but it's it's not too far off. Let me see what I got here. I've got 12 and 17 and a half. So it's probably not quite perfect. I think it needs uh, more of a more of a curvature, or less of a curvature, more pointy uh, here, and uh, that can be a little tricky. Um, but what I'll do here is find a spot to put just a titch of pressure on it, and see if I can't open that up into more point. Yeah, that that helped. Okay. So the next step for me is going to get some, uh, use some square wire and make an oval that approximates this one and uh, then futz with it and solder that in as a, as a seat to hold a cabochon. Um, yeah, I don't know what I've got. I mean, this is, this is in the ballpark that this too big of an amethyst that's about the right size. I could recut that. Um, let's see. Yeah, here's a, this is a slightly smaller amethyst. Um, yeah, it's going to be close. So, some a stone like that, you could almost make that work but it's uh, not quite it's a little too it's still not quite perfect um, the other thing I could do is stretch that a little bit on my uh, on my ring stretcher and give myself an extra half a millimeter uh, of, of uh, circumference and that might uh, accept a stone that was 12 by 18 millimeters a little bit better so let me double check the dimension on this amethyst it's not a super high. yeah that's 12 by 18 um, pretty pretty straightforwardly okay so maybe I'll do that I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I do that that's uh, also pretty easy to do um, we'll set up over there and I'll just give it a quick stretch okay so nothing particularly uh, 
subtle about this, what I'm going to do, you don't have to do, do it this way, there's lots of different ways to stretch rings. So what I'm doing, since it's large enough, I'm just going to sort of destroy my oval and make it round or roundish, but this will help me put just a bit more of a, of a stretch on there. Whoops! And what did I do? Did I break the, the solder joint again? Yes, I did. Okay, so I broke that solder joint, so I'm going to redo that. But you get the idea. It's uh, probably now about the right size. Um, and again, you don't have to do it this way. You know, you can actually measure and calculate things. Um, but uh, being who I am, I'm just doing it the, the, the dumb way. Uh, anyway, I'll resolder that and then reform the oval after I anneal it. Okay, so I resoldered it. You know, I'm afraid that this particular design with those uh, leaf tips um, are always going to be a bit of a, of a weak join uh, structurally. But thank goodness, I mean, it, that, that when, you, when you actually make that join, um, it won't need to hold a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, stretchy... Uh, strength. I'm going to solder in a, uh, like I said, a, a seat for a stone, and I. It, so I've got this to be exactly 12 by 18 now, which is nice. Um, and I happen to have a hand cut fire agate that uh, would fit in that just perfectly. So you can see that. So I may be changing my mind about the jade and putting a hand cut fire agate. In there, it's it's not a, a an absolutely gorgeous. See, it ha it has a a bit of a flaw uh, over here, or at least that that's the agate matrix. But the color is a is a beautiful uh, coloration on the botryoidal pattern that's deep in the stone. So as a prototype, uh, this might not be such a bad thing to do. Um, I've had to uh, use my pliers so much that I've I've deformed the design details just a little bit. Uh, which again in a prototype I guess I expect. Um, before I were to finish this ring what I'll do a, a, as a final thing is I'll use my gravers and I'll tighten up some of the detail that's been lost. Uh, it's pretty easy to do just with a simple hand graver uh, if you need to. Um, but if you uh, are careful initially uh, unlike what I was um, you don't deform the design as much. Okay. So anyway that's starting to look pretty okay. Okay, so to begin my seat, um, I've just made a ring with hard solder that is going to be about 15 millimeters in diameter. Yes, yeah, 14 and change. Um, so I'll form this into an oval that I hope will be able to fit pretty closely into the profile of the, of the ring setting. And uh, if not, then I'll, this is where you do some futtering around and um, filing and, and uh, grinding and, and just making it fit. So it's, it's not, uh, not particularly elegant. I don't have any secrets. I just go at it. So this will be then shaped into an oval and I'll see how well it fits into the base of the ring. All right. My first ring was way too big for the setting. So I cut it, reformed it, and um, to flatten it a little bit, I ran it through the rolling mill uh, to make it about one millimeter thick and a couple of millimeters wide. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to fabricate seats like this. You could do a solid piece and then cut it out. Uh, I like an open back, um, so I, I like to cut it out. You don't have to. So what I'm going to do is this needs to be evened up a little bit more. It's just friction fit in there right now. And then I'm going to solder it from the back using probably medium solder on this one. That will add a significant amount of integrity to that setting. Okay, And then I'll be able to reshape the shank into a round and I'll resize it uh, to be about a 9 to 10 and uh, I'll show you what that's like. Okay, this is uh, really nothing more than just being uh, fiddly about it and uh, I think I, I probably picked this up from somebody on YouTube, so I can't claim any credit for it. 
But I, I really like to make balls of solder when I'm doing an operation like this because um, that solder is going to need to be in contact with both surfaces and that angle uh, is pretty sharp and so uh, using balls of solder seems to improve my success at least with this. So I don't know if I've used enough solder. We're going to find out together. Um, we'll see. I'm going to see if this will completely fill in where it needs to or not. Let's see. So it's quite massive at this point. So I'll use my torch to heat the outside of the ring first because I want to be able to draw the solder onto the ring and then of course we'll hit it. I'd rather not be touching the solder with the flame but that's the way it is. Okay, I'm going to need to put just a little bit more on um, but uh, not too bad. It's pretty close. Okay, so that's soldered in. We'll give it a, a quick dip in some pickle and rinse it to quench. And uh, that's where we're at right now. So next step for me will be to uh, round it a little bit. But I think, what, notice what, what I've got here is a little extra thickness in that seat. So I'll be using a burr to curve the inside of that bezel. Uh, that's why I, I actually prefer to, to make it a little heavier uh, and put a little curvature in there so that it fits more comfortably on the finger, although this isn't bad. Um, but I think that'll be more professional. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's looking good. So what I'll do is I'll be grinding a little bit on the inside, I'll be uh, touching up on the, this part, and then I'll, I'll make it rounder and then I'll size it for about a nine and we'll see how it's going. So that's actually looking pretty nice. I, I think my anticipation is that I'll be using the two pointy edges as the main bearing source uh, uh, to push a little bit on the stone and uh, the sides not so much, uh, although I will cut those down a little bit and thin them significantly so that they're a little easier to push. Um, but yeah, it's going to be mostly held in by these two ends here. So actually it, 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 it will be functionally very much like one of the half uh, uh, bezel tubes that you can buy from Rio Grande. Uh, that'll be looking pretty good. So uh, next steps will be a little bit of filing and grinding and then shaping and I'll let you know where we're at then, okay? So you'll notice that what I did, all I did was use a fairly aggressive cylinder burr and I cut a profile in the backside of this uh, seat so that it matches the curvature, at least better, of the ring itself so that it doesn't look like uh, a, a sloppy, sloppy job. So that still needs to all be all polished up and everything, but uh, that was uh, taking care of that. And then I used a, a similar burr to cut a little more here so that this is really nice and flat and will make a nice bearing surface to support the stone. Um, okay, so now I'm going to put it on the mandrel and round it up and then I will resize it. Okay, so hopefully that's getting to be where it's making some sense. Okay, so it's... it's uh, fairly round, nice and round now. It's a very large ring and I don't like that so I'll be cutting this and cutting a couple of millimeters out of there and resoldering it. Um, but putting the seat in to that helped a lot. It, it, it made it possible to shape the shank without deforming the Dickens out of the out of the bearing. Um, and so this particular stone I have fits perfectly in that recess. So I may be turning this into a beautiful ring and then uh, it looks like there will be just enough material to set by pushing that over the shoulders or the girdle of that stone. Yeah, that's that's looking that's looking pretty good. 
Okay, and then I'll have to be cleaning up all the details. Okay, so next step is just sizing. Um, I mean, all, all that's involved there is cutting out and, and resoldering, so I probably won't videotape that. Alrighty, so the size 9 T-shank ring is uh, pre-polished. I This is not finished, but I, I got most of the uh, worst of the markings off of it and uh, it's going to go into the pickle just to to get at some of these areas of uh, uh, discoloration oxidation from the soldering operations that are deep in some of these lines and after the pickle I'm going to put it on the uh, bench and just hit it with a graver in a couple of spots because I'd like to sharpen up some of these lines okay and then it uh, will be polished and I'll treat it with liver of sulfur and then I'll set the stone and it should be good to go see it almost looks like a ring Well there, I think I'm pretty well fixed for that one. Okay, a word to the wise on this particular ring. I used 16 gauge uh, silver sterling to press this, uh, which I like. I like that for the ring. But these, if it was just a couple of things or prongs, they would be okay. But this uh, continuous leaf pattern is pretty substantial and so I had difficulty setting the stone and frankly the only way I was able to do it is with a punch and a hammer so um, I would have used a burr to carve a seat a little closer to thin down the metal from the inside in other words uh, cut around some of the metal out of there on the inside. I think if you cut like a, a third of the bulk out of it you could then use a, a, a pusher or a, a relatively simple less aggressive means of setting this. 
So what I'm going to do, since I've punched this, again, I've lost some of the detail there, but I'm just going to polish this off and make it look pretty. That stone is in there exceptionally well, so I, 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 I'm perfectly happy with the result. Um, it was just a bit more involved in the setting than I, I frankly would have would have liked myself. Okay, so uh, one of the last steps I'll do, it's not the last, but one of the last, is I'll use a, a silicone wheel and carefully uh, buff where I had hammered so that I can just smooth out those hammer marks, make it look a little bit nicer. So I, I'm using a, a fairly A fairly fine uh, grit silicone wheel. I like these for this kind of process. You have to be careful with them because uh, they can remove a lot of metal fast or put dents in things. They're not great for flat surfaces. But for something like this, uh, they're actually really quite nice. And then what I'll do is I'll use a, I'll use a paintbrush and uh, reapply a little liver of sulfur solution right onto this edge and simply watch it and uh, try to blend in some of that that color that is being lost as I as I polish these off. And you have to be careful not to not to touch the stone because even an agate um, will in fact blemish a little bit. It, it I mean not not it, the agates are tougher than Dickens compared to most stones but um, you, you don't want to put this right on the stone if you can help it. It's not a disaster. You can use a diamond Nova point or some diamond paste to clean up the stone if you have to, but that's extra labor. And I'm all about not doing that if you don't have to. Okay, so that's actually looking really sharp. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a quick a quick zap in the ultrasonic and uh, and see how it looks and then re-patina this uh, this fine leaf edge and clean it up and call it good.